Unfortunately, children born with sickle cell today have an average life expectancy of about 45 years. And that's about 25 years less than people in the United States without sickle cell disease. So it really, although we're good at controlling the symptoms for most of our childhood patients, over time when the sickling occurs, even if the children aren't having pain or aren't having symptoms, the organ damage is happening. Matched sibling donor transplant was the first established cure for sickle cell disease. Um, the first reports of that treatment came out in 1996 in the New England Journal of Medicine for a group of very sick patients undergoing the bone marrow transplant where we destroyed their blood forming and immune system and replaced it with their siblings, cured their sickle cell disease. And after their transplant, they didn't have any further episodes of vaso-occlusive crisis or progression of their organ damage. So those children, the initial report came out in 1996, are all still surviving. Myeloblative conditioning regimens are the same groups of medicines that we use for children who have leukemia or malignancies. And those chemotherapies come with a lot of side effects. They can affect your lung function. They can affect your heart function. Most full dose um, myeloablative regimens will result in infertility. So that is a trade-off. You can be cured of your disease, but cure comes with inherent risks. When you have a fully matched sibling donor, that's the safest kind of transplant to do, so you can accept a little more risk with the chemotherapy medicines because it increases your chances of being cured. When you're talking about non-myeloablative conditioning, it still involves chemotherapy, but the medicines are different and the doses are different. So that type of treatment is designed to suppress the patient's bone marrow for about six weeks. Then we infuse the donor cells, and within that six-week time frame, the donor cells usually fully replace the patient's own bone marrow. And the reason that um, reduced intensity or non-marrow destroying protocols are safer is because if the donor cells don't take after six weeks, the child's own blood and blood forming and immune system will come back. So you don't run the risk of having the donor cells fail to engraft and the child remain transfusion dependent. What I think pediatricians and hemat pediatric hematologists who are managing these kids during childhood need to think about is you might be controlling their symptoms really well right now and they're having a relatively normal life, but they still have a very reduced life expectancy and even though you're controlling a lot of their symptoms, their organ damage is still happening and is gonna become problematic for them in their adulthood. Children who are affected with sickle cell disease really deserve the opportunity to hear about potential cures.